know that in step three I said we would talk about charge controllers next, but we need to do a quick calculation for PV panels and wind generators before we can really do that. The reason is this. We have to know how much power we're going to process before we can determine which charge controller to get. So let's get started, but first a little history as usual. I owned a wind generator for about 15 years in New Mexico. When our farm burned down last year, that was the only thing that I didn't particularly mind seeing destroyed. It had always been a pain in my gluteus maximus. The reason I hated that wind generator so much was that I always had to mess with it. New Mexico has a lot of wind and a lot of sand. The average wind speed where I lived was 13.4 miles per hour, seemingly great for wind power. I learned that February through April the wind would blow over 40 miles per hour sun up to sun down. Birds don't fly real good in the wind and they usually stay on the ground when the wind blows except for the ones that were near the wind generator. Those would fly right straight up into the blades, one of the blades would snap in two and then the generator would bounce around on top of the tower out of balance and out of control. I would order new blades, get them by the end of May, install them and retighten all the bolts on the tower. June and most of July the wind never blew. The rest of the year the only time the wind would blow was during a storm. The wind generator spent most of its life either in the lower RPM where it looked like it was doing something but producing little to nothing or the wind was blowing so hard that it spent most of its time furled out of the wind and still producing little to nothing. So for me it was basically an expensive weather vane that I replaced $130 blades on every year. So that ended my stab at wind generators. But all you diehard wind generator fans take heart. I was a diehard too. Besides back then a wind generator cost only about $2 a watt and PV panels were over $5 a watt and that was if you could find one heck of a deal. Regardless of whether you choose wind, PV or both this is an area you should spend all your remaining budget on after you've factored your remaining costs too. It's easy to find a place to put excess electricity, but it's more difficult to add more panels and wind generators after you already have an installation. Putting on extra power generation is less expensive and not that much more work when you're already doing it than adding it later. My own calculations that I used were as follows. My basic needed kilowatt hours was three, if you remember back from the previous video. My desired kilowatt hours was 4.5. But remember on that my desired kilowatt hours, I still left out a lot of things like the clothes washer, the saws, drills, air compressor, those types of things. Well, this is where I throw in everything. If I want to run all those things, even though I'm not going to run them when it would be running on the batteries, I still need the power input to support those. So what I call my total good living kilowatt hours calculation was 5.3 kilowatt hours. Then after that I threw in another 4 kilowatt hours for an electric water heater for load diversion purposes to use for domestic hot water in the house. That gave me a whopping 9.3 kilowatt hours per day for my total good living kilowatt hours that I wanted. 9.3 kilowatt hours is what I will be using for sizing a wind generator or PV panel for the purposes of this video. Calculating PV and wind requirements for me has become just as much of an art as a science because of the variability of the environment. Ultimately you're just taking your best educated guess so the intent here is to make the best closest guess to reality as possible. I always take the average worst case scenario and use it for my purposes. I use data from wind and sun charts of the worst month average. That way I know I'm going to have a few rough days, but mostly good days electrically speaking. Besides, on the days we have tons of electricity, we get to live really large. Those are jacuzzi and electric grilling days. Now to determine what you need in the way of a wind generator or PV panels, you can obtain wind speed information from the National Climatic Data Center at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's website. It's a little hard to navigate, 
but persistence prevails. You can also find pretty good charts on websites where PV panels and wind generators are sold. Unfortunately, I don't even remember much about wind generator sizing and calculation because my last installation was nearly 20 years ago. But I do know that once you have found your lowest month's average wind speed, you will use that figure to calculate the wind generator size you need. Find a wind generator with kilowatt output at least equal to your kilowatt requirements rated at your low average wind speed. Kilowatt requirements is calculated by taking your kilowatt hour requirements and dividing by 24. This gives you running ongoing kilowatt requirements that you want to match up with your wind generator. So if my average wind speed is 12 miles per hour, I calculate it like this. My total good living kilowatt hour requirements of 9.3 times 1000 divided by 24. This gives 387.5. So a wind generator that can produce about 400 watts in a 12 mile an hour wind should satisfy my need here. 400 watts doesn't sound like much, but in a 12 mile per hour wind speed average, it's a lot of power. According to Southwest Wind Power's brochure, the Whisper 500 is the closest fit at an output of 500 watts in an average wind speed of 12 miles per hour. It costs $8,552. Then you still need to buy a tower and a hire a crane to erect it. The shortest tower is $1,322. So at $9,872, you're giving a $10,000 bill a real good tickle and you haven't even gotten it in the air yet. For PV panels, you need to have an idea of how much direct sunlight you get. Here in Colorado, I found a sun chart that claimed Denver only averaged two sun hours per day in January and February, and that's not much, and I had a hard time reckoning with that chart. After a lot of thought and mental debate, I decided to make up my own chart by using this method. I went to sunrisesunset.com and found that the sun rose at approximately 7.30 a.m., and set at approximately 4.30 p.m. on the shortest day in mid-December. I noticed that where I live, it tends to cloud up around 3 p.m. and then stay cloudy the rest of the day with rain or snow depending on the time of the year. So I changed my sunset time to 3 p.m. A quick military time subtraction reveals that 1500 minus 730 equals 7.5 hours of lit sky. I say lit sky because a PV panel is rated for full perpendicular sun exposure. The sun at an angle gives less power, and indirect lighting on a panel gives even less, and a shaded panel spells doom. Now I took my seven and a half hours of lit sky time, divided that by two because the panels will put out more and more as the sun gets higher and higher, and then less and less as the sun gets lower and lower on its way down. 7.5 divided by 2 gave me 3.75 hours per day of my worst case scenario. I was still kind of surprised that the amount of sun was so low using this calculation, but I did like it better than the other chart I had. As it turns out, this calculation was surprisingly accurate for me. To see how much PV wattage I needed, I ran the calculation like this. My total good living kilowatt hours times 1,000 divided by sun hours equals your total PV panel wattage required. I multiplied my total good living kilowatt hours of 9.3 by 1,000 to get the watt hours divided by my calculated sun hours of 3.75 which gave me 2,480 watts of PV panel requirements. A call to my supplier found that if I bought at least 20 200 watt panels, I could get them for 97 cents per watt. I remembered the days when I paid $5 a watt for my last batch of PV panels and I felt like I'd robbed my supplier. I had gotten a thousand watts for $5,000 and felt like I had won the lottery back then. On this call, I had to catch my breath and immediately ordered $5,000 worth. My supplier calmly responded, 
That gives you an odd number of panels, sir. You need to go up by three panels or down by one for your selected charge controller. I changed my order to 24 200 watt panels and finally got my head back on straight. I needed 2,480 watts of panels to supply our needs in worst case scenario situations. But I had 4,800 watts of panels on the way, nearly double what I expected to get for the same money. After all, I had budgeted $5,000 for PV panels. I purchased two massive iron ground mount racks for $2,874. The wind doesn't blow here very often on this mountaintop, but when it does, it blows really hard. Now during the day, we get plenty of hot water so my wife can have a shower mid-morning and another at night before we go to bed. Almost unbelievably, this happens even in cloudy weather. During sunny days, we live large. We run the heat pumps all day, my wife gets to take long hot baths, and we do lots of cooking and laundry. And that's what we do more as the norm than the exception. The reason is mostly due to my charge controller, which we'll cover next time on Step 5 of Designing Your Energy System. Have a great week, thank you for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Thank you.